What is the meaning of Hajarun? A big rock. Hada Sukkarun. Look at the Shadda on Kaf. Hada Sukkarun. Vadalika Lebanon. This is sugar and that is milk. Now, brother, Sukkarun. Okay? This is an Arabic word. In English we say sugar, but it has been derived from Arabic. Sugar is derived from Sukkarun. Are you with me, brothers? We welcome you to this new Arabic course. When you say a sentence, in Arabic we'll say al jumlatul. Sentence is a group of words which make complete sense, brother. A group of words which does not make complete sense, then it is not a sentence. Then we can call it a phrase. Okay, we call it a phrase. Huh? So here we are concerned with sentence. Okay. Now, in Arabic language, there are two kinds of sentences. How many kinds? Two kinds. Two kinds huh? One is called Al-Jumlatul Ismiyatu and other is called Al-Jumlatul Fi'aliyatu. Fi'al. Huh? Remember, Fi'al means verb. Huh? Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Fi'alun means verb. Okay. So, it's very simple. Al-Jumlatul Ismiyatu what do we call in English? Nominal sentence will begin with a noun. And al-jumlatul fi'liyatu in English, verbal sentence will begin with a verb. Okay, fine. Easy, very easy. Let's talk about in English. A nominal sentence has two parts. Hmm? It's broken into two sections. Section number one, subject. What is section number two? <coughs> Predicate. Huh? Subject is a noun that we are talking about. And predicate is a statement about the no. noun. It gives a little more detail. Subject in Arabic is called al-mubtada. Huh? Al-mubtada. Or you can simply say Muptada. What will you say? Muptada. Those who know Urdu, for them it's very easy. Because they use Muptada. Just say Ibtada hoti hai. Things with which you begin something. Muptada. Huh? What is the meaning of Muptada? The thing which begins with. Okay? Something that is used to begin something. Muptada. Okay? Subject. And what is uh, called. Uh, Predicate in Arabic, very simple. Al-Khabaru. Or you'll say, Khabar. Are you with me? Khabar means news. What is the meaning of Khabar? News. Huh? But as I said, brother, in English, we have subject and predicate. Are you with me? But in Arabic, we have Muqtada and Khabar. Are you with me, brother? Uh, subject, predicate. Subject means muptada, predicate means khabar. Every sentence, if it is a jumla ismiya, will have these two parts. There will be a subject and there will be a predicate. Now we come to al kalamu maksurun. What is the meaning now? Say it loudly. The pen. What did you say? The pen. The pen. Huh? You started the sentence with the pen. The pen is broken. You started with the. You will always start with what did you start with? The. It means you started with a definite noun. The muptada will be most of the time definite. And then, brother, what about the khabar? Khabar will be most of the time indefinite. Huh? So you won't say a ah in it because it's an adjective. Huh? But if I say 
Muhammad is a doctor. So what will you say? Muhammadun Tabibun. Muhammad is definite. But Tabibun is a indefinite. Are you with me? Now, more uh, example, brother. Haza Baitun. Are you with me? Baitun, a house. Huh? But Haza, okay, actually it is definite. We are not going to go in detail now, but later on we will explain you that even Haza is a definite. Because when you point out to something, it is something particular. Huh? But we will go in detail later on. Huh? Rule number two. Muptada will always be marfu. Are you with me? Muftada will always be marfu. What is the meaning of that? It will end with a dhamma. See now we are coming, right away we are coming to what we were uh, trying to say in the beginning. That noun, it can be marfu, it can be Mansu, or it can be Mansu. Now, as I said, we want to know why they are Marfu and Mansu and Majru. So if it is a Muptada, it will always be Marfu. Kharas. Karda idea, brother? If it is a Muptada, it will always be Marfu. And if it is news, khabar, then also it will always be Marfu. And if there are no vowel signs, we will still make it marfu. So, brothers and sisters, here we come. Al-Kalamu Maksurun. Is Al-Kalamu marfu? Yes. Is Maksurun marfu? Yes. Huh? Okay. Both are marfu. Huh? What is Al-Kalamu? Mubtada. Are you with me? What is Al-Kalamu? Oh, where is the khabar? What about the pen? Tell me more about the pen. Where is the khabar? Maksur. It's broken. Are you with me? So, mubtada and khabar. Mubtada and khabar. Next sentence, brother. Al-babu maftuhun. Uh, what is the translation of al-babu? The door. What did you say? The door. Definite. You use that. Uh, okay. And what is it now? What is the news? Is open. Huh? Okay, now we go in Arabic. Al-Babu. What is Al-Babu? Mubtada. Uh, what is Maftuhun? Khabar. The news. Are you with me? Is it clear? Brother, Al-Waladu. The boy. What it can be? It started the sentence. It's Marfu. It started the sentence, so it has to be? It's Mubtada. Huh? The sentence begins with a noun. Huh? So it is a nominal sentence. Jumla ismiya. Huh? The boy, that is our muftada. Where is the khabar? Waqifun. Standing. Are you with me? So here we have got simple sentences and we are easily identifying the words in it. One is muftada, other is khabar. Uh, Jumla ismiya, mubtada, and khabar. Mubtada marfu, khabar also marfu. Are you with me? Al kitabu, what is it? Al kitabu jadidun. Al kitabu mubtada, jadidun is the khabar. Are you with me? The translation is, the book is new. Wal kalamu and the pen. Qadimun, that is your khabar. Huh? Next one, Al Himaru Sagirun. The donkey is small. Wal Hisanu Kabirun. And the horse is big. Do you see the khabar is indefinite? Huh? All the time indefinite coming. Huh? Brother, tell me, isn't it easy? I hope you will find it easy. Huh? Because we will be repeating these things, inshallah. The grammar of Arabic language came from the Quran. The Quran dictates the grammar of Arabic language. Man. So everything that you want to learn about Arabic grammar, the Quran is going to teach you. 
And everything we will learn, brother. And from time to time I'll bring examples, you know. Even examples of exception to the rule. We will find it on the Quran. You know, and you will love it. And you know, most of you are very well into Quran. You have been studying for a long time. You have memorized. But now you will understand the Quran from a different perspective. It will come to you in a different colors. You know, and inshallah, we will feel the magic of Quran in our heart. Okay, inshallah. What is the first sentence, brother? Hada baitun. I want you to analyze it. Yeah. What are you looking for? Sister Salma? Muftada and Khabar. We are only looking for these two things. Huh? Okay. So when you say Hada baitun, where is Muftada? Hada is your Muftada. And remember it is definite. It is definite. Because when you say Hada, you are pointing out to something particular. So it is definite. In fact, let me tell you a rule. All pronouns, all pronouns are definite. All pronouns are definite. Because the pronoun replaces noun. We will learn more about pronouns. Okay? So, Hadha is the pronoun, and pronouns are all definite. Huh? Okay? By their nature, they are all definite. Okay, fine. Hada baitun. So Hada is definite. Because we know Muptada has to be definite most of the time. Okay, Hada baitun. What is Hada? Muptada. What is Hada? Muptada. Oh, where is the khabar? Baitun. But I told you this is all halwa puri. Now do you believe me? It is all halwa puri. Zalika, Zalika Najmun. Zalika Najmun. Where is Mubtada? Zalika. Najmun is khabar. Remember, Mubtada is marfu. So, Zalika is marfu. What is Zalika? A pronoun. Are you with me? Zalika is pronoun. And all pronouns are definite. Definite. Are you with me? All pronouns are definite. Al Muhandisu, what is the meaning of Muhandisu? Engineer. Al Muhandisu Jalisun. It is sitting. Where is Muptada? Al Muhandisu Jalisun? Khabar. Okay. Now, next one. What is given here? Can you see the next one? What is given here? It is. The khabar that has been given. So we have to bring a proper muftada. But then we have to bring it from our head. It's not mentioned here. And muftada is marfu and it is also definite. Are you with me brothers and sisters? It is definite. Fine. Nazifun. Something is nazifun. Something is clean. Are you with me? Tell me. Al Kamisu Nazifun. So you started with Al. Huh? Muftada. Are you with me, brothers? Al Kamisu. MashaAllah. Masha. Next one is Maksurun. Something is broken. So you are bringing now Muftadas. Al Maktabu Maksurun. Muftada Khabar. Very good. Karibun. Karibun. Al Masjidu Karibun. Whatever you can say. Okay, brother. Something is far. Al Kamaru Baidun. Very good, brother. And when you, your answers are correct, uh, I, I get a special happiness that things are now, you know, working and you are understanding. I would like you to memorize them, the vocabs. Huh? The vocabs we should memorize. And from now onwards, we should make a special effort to memorize. Allahu, definite. What is this? Jumla ismiya. What is this? Muqtada. Oh, where is the khabar of this? Ghafur. Allahu ghafur. Allah is most forgiving. Huh? We are going to learn two kinds of Hamza. One is called Hamzatul Wasal. 
حمزت الوسل حمزہ آف ایسیملیشن حمزت الوسل حمزہ آف ایسیملیشن اینڈ دا ادر ون از کالڈ حمزت القطع اوکے ناؤ ان دا قرآن وچ آر پرنٹیڈ ان انڈیا پاکستان دے ڈو ناٹ ڈفرینشیٹ بٹوین دیز ٹو برادر دے ڈو ناٹ ڈفرینشیٹ بٹوین دیز ٹو But the Quran which are printed in the Middle East, they are, Hamzas are clearly identified. And I think it is extremely, extremely important that we should follow the method which is in coming from Middle East because Arabic is their language. They know it, okay? So, what is the difference, brother? There are about eight or nine nouns in which brothers and sisters Hamza when it comes it's Hamza Tul Wasal okay we are going to learn it slowly slowly you do not I, I don't want to write everything on the board I will just introduce to you Hamza Tul Wasal as it will come in the lesson but I will try to explain you that in detail what happens with Hamza Tul Wasal If I write down, brothers and sisters, Al-Kitabu, what is this, brother? Uh, no. Alif has no sound. No, it is Hamza. Alif has no sound. It is Hamza. Huh? What is it? Hamza. But you see, you are reading as Al. You gave a vowel sign on Hamza. And you gave a sukoon on Lam. Are you with me, brother? Every time you will see Al, you will read it Al without vowel signs. Uh, and you know there is a Fatah here and there is a Sukun here. You know it, uh, brothers and sisters. Now, Hamdatul Wasal, it will be only pronounced if it begins, the sentence begins with it. Otherwise, you will not pronounce it. Are you with me, brother? If I say Al-Kitabu and then write down Jadidun, the sentence begins with Al-Kitabu. But suppose if I were to add here, wow, now what will become? Wal kitab oh, Why did you not pronounce Hamza, brother? Why did you not pronounce, brother? Any reason? Sister Salma? The reason is that it is Hamzatul Wasal. It gets assimilated. Huh? When does it get assimilated? When it comes in the middle or a particle in front of it. Then you do not pronounce it. So what is this wow? It is conjunction. When it came in front of Hamzatul Wasal, you did not pronounce You will say, Wal Kitab. But if I write, brother Ahmad, do you see I put the thing here? This is the neck of Ain. What is it? Neck of Ain. Huh? I put it. Huh? Okay. Hamza is written as a neck of the Ain. Okay. When the Hamzatul Qata comes, you got to pronounce it whenever it comes. And wherever it comes. If I had to write down here, wa, what will you do? Wa Ahmadu. You cannot skip now. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? You cannot skip it now. You will always, always, always pronounce, no matter where it comes. So how do we differentiate? How do we differentiate? So whenever there is a Hamzatul Wasal, you will not put the Hamza sign. But there is a Hamzatul Qata, you will put that sign there. And because most of us are, our parents are from India, Pakistan, and we are used to India, Pakistan script, whenever you write, you always write like this. And my teacher always used to say, In the red ink, she would write down 
Kata on it. To tell me that this is Hamzatul Kata, you must put the neck of Ain on it to differentiate. If you only wrote, then this is technically incorrect. You have to write down with the neck of Ain. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? No. In order to tell people that this is Hamzatul Wasal, you don't write anything, but you put a little sign. It's kind of a small sword. This is for those who uh, have difficulty, okay, in uh, identifying. Out of 28 consonants, they are divided equally into two groups. Huh? In English, we call them moon letters and sun letters. And in Arabic, we call it al huruful kamriya moon letters, al huruful shamsiya sun letters. Now, when you have al coming, brothers and sisters, when you have al coming, if it is a moon letter, you will pronounce the lamb. al abu so I did pronounce Lam. Are you with me? I did pronounce Lam. Okay, the next letter is Ba. And it is written here, Al Babu. Are you with me? Huh? Compare that to Ta. Huh? We come to Ta now. How will you pronounce this now? Atta Jiru. You did not pronounce Lam. Okay, you did not pronounce, you skipped it. What is Tajir? Marchant. So, brother and sister, at Okay. Now, this shata is given to tell you that this letter is shamsi. That is shamsi. Later on, you won't need it. Your mind will figure out, brother. Huh? Okay. So, brother, whenever there is a sun letter, you will not pronounce lam. You will not pronounce lam. Fa. What is the Noun given, a thawbu, dress, a thawbu. Then we have jim, brother, you will pronounce lam, al jannatu, the garden. Are you with me, brother? Okay. Now, then there is a ha, al himar, and then there is a ha, al khubzu, bread. Are you with me, brother? As soon as you come to Dal, there's a chain of sun letters. Are you with me? There's a chain of sun letters till you stop at Ain. So these are all sun letters. Huh? So it's easy. So let's remember Dal, Zal, Ra, Za, Sin, Sheen, Sa, Dwa, Ta, Va. Those are all sun letters. And when you will pronounce them with Alif Lam, you will not pronounce Lam. Okay, look at this, brother. Addiku, not Aldiku. Are you with me? Addiku. Addiku. Next one, brother. Azzahabu. Gold. Huh? Gold. And then, brother. Arrajulu. Huh? Arrajulu. Huh? The man. Huh? Not Al Rajulu. Huh? It will be wrong to say Al-Rajulu. It will be Ar-Rajulu. We won't pronounce Lam. Why? Because it is a sun letter. Huh? And then, brother, Az-Zahiratu, the flower. My daughter's name is Zahra. Same, Az-Zahiratu. Okay. As-Samaku, fish. See, As-Samaku. Huh? And then, Ash-Shamsu, no Lam. Hamza is pronounced. But if wow came, put wow, wow in front of this, you'll say wash. Even alif and lam both were assimilated. Wash shamsu. Okay? And then brother, as sadru, the chest. Ad uh, the guest. Guest. And then at talibu. Not al talibu, but at talibu, at talibu. Then, brother, 
back huh? your back and then al ainu the eye we pronounce lam al ainu okay and al ghadaw lunch lunch huh? al ghadaw okay brothers and sisters al famu mouth famu brothers mouth huh? al famu al kamaru the moon al kalbu the dog al lahmu huh? al lahmu okay meat okay and then we have al mau the water an najm an najm okay fine brothers and sisters al waladu al waladu al hawa hawa is not urdu word huh? hawa is a arabic word now we understand from here onwards that the arabic alphabet is divided into two parts sun letters if you want dictionaries not for the only not only for quran but for ordinary arabic then of course hans weir is uh, very good he gives madi mudara he also write the letters kataba and then he write he don't write i or rest he just writes you yaktubu uh, and then he gives masdar it's very important masdar Use masdar, but in Latin letters. Uh, and then, uh, if it is verb, he'll give you only for some all the meaning of the word mujarrad. And then he will go on to give the mazid number two means bafaala, number three is bafaala, like that. He has, of course, me explain and all of you know the. numbers of the various babs if it is a noun he will write second declension second declension is mamnomena sir second declension and when he finishes with the verb he comes up with the derivatives nouns for example kataba yaktubu and then he will kitab maktab all that So it's a good dictionary. It's based on modern Arabic. Based on modern Arabic. If you want to find out the meanings of, especially uh, 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 now words that are special to Quran, special to Quran. Kataba, for example, you will find out. But there is a word Kataba, for example. Kataba in modern Arabic is to correspond. Uh, but in, uh, in the Quranic Arabic, Kataba has a different meaning that you will not find. It is not meant for. But in rice, you will find Kataba. What does it mean? That is the contract that a slave gets into with his master to buy his freedom, to purchase his freedom. He will say, within a period of two years, three years, whatever period they agree to. i will pay you or i will serve you for such a period i will pay you such amount of money that is mukataba fakatibu min surah al surah an-nur fakatibuhum so that you will not find but you will find in penrise you will find in abbas nawiz dictionary the words the meanings that are specially used in the quran and the form certain forms may not be found in modern arabic but they are found in the quranic arabic all that you find in these uh, three books there is a arabic book a small book it is called misbah al misbah al munir al misbah al munir al misbah al munir that is bright uh, lamp uh, the author is fayumi al fayumi al fayumi المصباح المنير للفيومي 
this dictionary, the speciality of this dictionary is that it mentions the Bab. Bab, other modern dictionaries mention the Bab, but they write Fatha Dhamma Kasra, the print Fatha Dhamma Kasra. But here, that may, that may lead to mistakes also, because printer, uh, printing mistakes, instead of Fatha you could put Kasra. He doesn't do that. In, for you, he, he says Bab Kada. Bab Nasara, Bab Fatha, Fataha. So you can't make a mistake there because he mentions uh, the basic words which are used to determine the Abwab. Uh, he is very particular about Abwab. You will not find this in other dictionaries. And also singular and plural. Plural of nouns. Uh, he is very particular about it, very correct whenever he mentions plurals of nouns and bab of verbs. For, uh, of course that is a dictionary of ancient time. You will not find words that are used in modern Arabic. If you want modern Arabic, of course you have Hans Weir. Hans Weir gives modern words belonging to modern Arabic. Uh, words like electricity, like uh, telephone and all that, you'll find. A dictionary in Arabic is Al-Mu'jam Al-Wasit. Wasit means what? Medium. Al-Mu'jam is a dictionary. It's not very large dictionary, it's not very small, but it's medium. Al-Mu'jam al wasit it has been, it's a, one of the publications of the Arab Academy of Egypt. There are academies, one of them is in Egypt, so it is a publication of the Arab Academy, Arabic Language Academy in Egypt. It doesn't have one author, it's a group of people. It's also, I think, available, uh, do you have this? Uh, yes, al Mu'jam al Wasit. Of course, uh, uh, those who have, you know, they are learning the language may not be able to uh, understand much from these, but in future you will, inshallah, uh, be able to understand both these books. Reading will help, inshallah. I would suggest, of course, along with the Quran, uh, the Translation of Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari, because uh, the language of the Qur'an is inimitable. But the hadith, language of hadith, you can make use of it in your daily life, because there are a lot of expressions that can be useful in daily life. So it's doubly because it is also a book of hadith, and also you will benefit from the linguistic point of view. You have... Uh, Mohsin Khan's translation, uh, Hilali and Khan, Hilali and Khan, translation by Hilali and Khan in nine volumes. It has been published by various publishers, uh, Darus Salam, for example. So it is, this text of the Hadith is on the right and the translation is on the left. Uh, it's a simple translation and you will, inshallah, benefit from this. Uh, there is also a book, a collection of hadith, the, uh, the Riyadh al-Salihin. I think you also have this, Riyadh al-Salihin, the Nawawi. Uh, it's selection from Bukhari, Muslim and different collections of hadith and arranged according to subjects like Tawbah, like Salah, like different topics. Uh, you also have translation for this? So if you have translation, that will also help you. I would suggest that whenever you read and come across a word that you have been looking for, you want to express an idea and you don't know what, to, what word to use, you can, if you find this word, you can take down, have a small dictionary like thing, jot down all these words that you find useful. And also, more than words, I would suggest the expressions. 
sentences or half a sentence that you think is very useful, you want to use this in your life, that kind of expression, you can either highlight it in the text itself so that you can easily find out the expressions and also make a note of, of these expressions at the end of the uh, book. Usually there are two or three pages without writing. You can make a note there, cross-referencing. So that way, when you finish reading this book, you will have a very good collection of words and expressions. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Okay, this is part three of الجموع, the plurals. In the previous lessons, we spoke about the sound plural and how it's usually used for the lesser plural, although there are some exceptions to this. And we covered one of these, for example, the word ibn, son. It has two plurals, abna, which is on the pattern of jamul qilla, and we have the word banun, which is here the sound plural, and it's used for the greater plural. Now that's one aspect, the greater and lesser plural. However, there's another aspect to this, and this is based on whether the actual plural indicates an action, somebody engaging in an action, or a state. So a fi'l is an action, while the ism is a state. And we spoke about this in a number of different lessons. Now when we use the sound plural, the jam or sanim, this plural will be closer to the action. Now although the jam sanim is an ism, but it will be more closely related to the fa'il, the action that it's associated with. While the jam or taksir, the broken plural, will be more closely related to the ism, or the actual state. Now I'm going to be explaining this in some detail, inshallah. Okay, we have the Jammu Salim. Now, the first aspect of this is that it has a similar structure to that of verbs. So what do I mean by that? Here we have the verb, yahfaduna, which means they are protecting or guarding. So this is the plural verb, and Similar to this verb, we have the ism fa'il, hafidhuna, which means they are protectors. So as you remember, this denotes a verb or action, which has a time frame, while this is more of a state. Now just notice something about the ending, is that when they're made plural, it's done in the same way. And that's one aspect which makes them related, is the structure of how to make it a plural. Now the second aspect of this is that this jama, jama salim, they act like a verb, grammatically. So what do I mean by that? The first thing is they can take an object. So for example, this is in Surah Al-Hazab, it's talking about the believers. وَالْحَافِظِينَ فُرُوجَهُمْ So furuja here, is the maf'ul bihi, and that's why it's mansub here. So one could actually say instead of حافظين فروجهم يحفظون فروجهم You can use the verb form in place of the ism fa'il. But actually here, there's more emphasis. It's more emphatic to use the ism form here. Because this denotes something that is happening always. And we spoke about this in a number of other lessons. Another point is that the jam salim can have an associated prepositional phrase. So Ajah Majrur is associated with either a verb or something which acts like a verb or has the meaning of a verb. So just briefly about this is when we say, for example, um, Zaydun fil bayt. Here the Ajah Majrur actually is associated with a hidden khabar. And this khabar acts like a verb. It's not associated with Zayd when we say Zaydun fil bayt. We'll talk about this in a lot more detail, inshallah, in a future lesson. But the point is, that a jam'u salim has this associated 
prepositional phrase. For example, so here it's talking about the preservation of the Quran. Wa inna lahu lahafidun. So here lahu. This lahu, the jamajrur, is associated with the ism fa'il, hafiduna. So one could have said, actually, inna nahfadu lahu. What's happening? Lahu is being brought in front. And this is being changed into the ism fa'il. So that's two aspects that the jamu salim is similar to a verb. And that's why we say a jamu salim is actually closer to a verb than the jamu taksir. Now, another example. وَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمُ الْحَقُّ قَالُوا هَذَا سِحْرٌ وَإِنَّا بِهِ كَافِرُونَ But when the truth came to them, they said, this is magic. Indeed, we are concerning it disbelievers. وَإِنَّا بِهِ كَافِرُونَ So this جَعْ مَجْرُورُ here is being brought in front. And then word كَافِرُونَ it could have actually been worded, inna nakfuru bihi. That could have been worded, but here, the ism fa'il is being used. And notice the, the jamaj associated with the ism fa'il. Now what scholars of Balagha say is the following. It says here, fil kafirin, or kafirun, ma'an al hadith. It has the meaning of action. فتعلق به الجار والمجور أكثر من عشري مرات which means that the word kafirun the jam'u salim has an associated jam majrur in more than 10 places in the Quran it says لقرب هذا الجمع من الفعلية because of its closeness to the verb kafirun means somebody that's acting doing this act it says ولم يتعلق مرة واحدة بالكفار Oh, al kafara. So there is no jama jrur associated with the two plurals, kuffar and kafara, which are both found in the Quran. It finishes off by saying that these plurals, kuffar and kafara, occur in the Quran in 22 different places. And in none of these places is there an associated jama jrur. For example, jahidil kuffar. Fight against the kuffar. Here it's indicating a title. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَفَرَةُ الْفَجَرَةُ So here they are, disbelievers. It's not indicating an action. However, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ Here it's talking about ibadah, something that you do. So the word kafirun was used. Now with the jamu taksir. So it's used as a name and or a state. Now, there are a number of other meanings associated with the different patterns of the broken plural. And this will be discussed in the next lesson, inshallah. So, different patterns of the jam taksir have different subtleties associated with it. Like, for example, the word kuffar and the word kafara. They're both jam al taksir. But what's the difference between them? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use kafara in one section and use kuffar in another section? When they both mean disbelievers, and they're both broken plurals, and they're both on the pattern of Jam al So this, so this actually some salties that we'll go through inshallah. So in front of us we have these four plurals. The top two is Hakimun and Hukam. They both mean judges or those who pass judgment. Now Hakimun denotes those who are passing judgment, or those who are engaged in this act. While hukam is actually a title for these people. Similarly, katibuna denotes those who write, possibly authors, so those who are writing. While the jama' kutab actually denotes a title for these people, authors. Now we have this sentence in front of us. ذَهَبْنَا إِلَى الْمَحْكَمَةِ فَوَجَدْنَا الْحُكَّامَ حَاكِمِينَ بِالْقَضِيَّةِ Now this translated means we went to the courthouse, the mahkamah, and we saw 
or we found, wajadna, that the judges, the hukam, were issuing a verdict, hakimina, regarding a legal matter, bil qadiyya. So, as you can see by the translation, here, hukam is a title. It's what they are. They're judges. We found the judges, or we saw the judges. And then we have hakimina, the other plural, the jama' salim, being used here like a verb. So hakimina here means issuing a verdict, or judging. And then we have bil qadiyya. This is a jama jrur that's associated with hakimin. So you notice here, hakimin has the meaning of an action. So you can see how hukam and hakimin have their own usage. And we can't interchange one with the other. For example, we can't say, وَجَدْنَا الْحُكَّامَ حُكَّامَ بِالْقَضِيَّةِ Or, وَجَدْنَا الْحَاكِمِينَ حَاكِمِينَ بِالْقَضِيَّةِ Or, to put them in the other way around, وَجَدْنَا الْحَاكِمِينَ حُكَّام بِالْقَضِيَّةِ that is incorrect to say that. Now here hakimin is mansub, and this is because it's coming as an attribute to al hukam. So it was possible actually to say, "Wajadna al hukama yahkumuna bil qadiyya," using the verb, but here the ism is being used, and that's done for more emphasis. Examples in the Quran. So this is a verse in Surah Tawbah. It says, "Wal hafiduna." And those who observe the limits set by Allah. So here we have the ism fa'il being used. It's talking about those who observe the limits set by Allah. And this obviously indicates action. Something that happens constantly. Now there's another plural, which is on the pattern of Jamal Taksir. Huffad. Now as I said, Huffad denotes more the ism or the state. It's disassociated from action. So that's why it was not used here. Now, for example, let's say we want to speak about the scholars who have preserved the religion, who actually have spent their life dedicated to learning the religion and preserving the religion. One of the titles we'll call these scholars is Hafal, as a title. You can see it's not noting action. It's noting a state or an ism. Next ayah. And we have sent the fertilizing winds and sent down water from the sky and given you drink from it. And then the last part, وَمَا أَنْتُمْ لَهُ بِخَازِنِينَ And you are not its retainers. Now this خَازِنِين is a ism fa'il from the verb خَزَنَ which means to guard, to store, to preserve. And we have for example the word خِزَانَ which means a storeroom. So we get a number of Meanings associated with the act of preserving and guarding. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying is that you are not the preservers of this. You have no say in this. It's we that do this. So here the, the blessings of Allah is mentioned, which are actions. And we have sent the fertilizing winds and sent down water from the sky. kumuhu, And we have given you drink from it. So this action is being mentioned here. So what was more appropriate was to use a plural closer to the action. Okay, this is what the Ghafir says, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ فِي النَّارِ لِخَزَنَةِ جَهَنَّمَ So this is the word. أَدْعُوا رَبُّكُمْ يُخَفِّفُ عَنَّا يَوْمًا مِنَ الْعَذَابِ This will be a very terrible state that the disbelievers are in. And those in the fire will say to the keepers of hell, here the keepers, the ones who preserve and guard the hell are being referred to as khazana the jama' taksir is being used to note the ism so what scholars say in al khazinin to feed al fi'liya bi khilaf khazana so this here is close to the fi'l as we said while khazana refers to a group of angels responsible for preserving and guiding the hellfire. So here it's referred to as a title, rather than somebody engaged in the action. Now, if you remember in the last lesson, 
We spoke about the difference between these three plurals, Mota, Amwat, and Mayitun, or Mayitin in the Nasr Banjar. So you notice this is Jem or Sadam here. So you wouldn't be surprised to know that this is used for an action, the action of dying, to die. So the verse says, ثُمَّ إِنَّكُمْ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ لَمَيِّتُونَ And indeed, after that, you are to die. You will go through this process. So here, let's talk about the action. 